those alveoli that are in the respiratory zone, we've referred to them as the sites where gas exchange happens, but they don't just house gas, they actually are lined with fluid. And this is true for all alveoli. If they're healthy, they have a fluid lining. And that layer of fluid is maintained by the type two alveolar cells. And the way that they do this, um, so sometimes they need to increase the amount of fluid, other times they might need to decrease the amount of fluid. So they have two antagonistic mechanisms um, to allow them to control fluid in both of those directions. If they need to um, reduce how much fluid is in the alveoli, I've got to think about this to make sure I tell you the right way around. If they need to reduce how much fluid is in the alveoli, then what they do is they take up some of the sodium ions from their surroundings. They take in, um, through active transport, they use some energy to do this, they take in a sodium ion, and then what happens is water follows the sodium, just follows the, the rules of osmosis and diffusion. Um, so that causes there to be a decrease in how much fluid there is inside of the alveoli, because okay, the water's moved into the cell instead. If the alveolar cells need to increase how much fluid there is in the alveoli, then what they do is they transport chloride ions out. So chloride ions, they can be also transported by active transport, uses some energy. Um, and then same thing, once the chloride is, is transported outwards, water tends to go with it. Water tends to flow down, um, down that gradient. It follows the chloride ion out. So that allows control in both directions. Uh, the layer, the fluid layer that is maintained in the alveoli, uh, think back to properties of water. There are some special properties of water, right? One of which is surface tension. Just the fact that water forms so many hydrogen bonds with itself means that water has a very high surface tension. So this has some consequences. If we have a thin layer of water lining our alveoli, um, then what happens is there's a high surface tension. Those water molecules tend to pull together, pull each other together. This actually creates a force inwards. Let's just look at this alveoli over here. Surface tension would, would tend to cause this, alveo this alveolus to, to collapse, to collapse in on itself. Um, so it increases the pressure down here in the alveoli. And there has to be something to prevent that collapse from happening. That's, that's not what takes place, right? We need those air pockets to stay open so that we can breathe. So this is where, um, this is where those type two alveolar cells come into play yet again. Uh, another thing that they do, in addition to maintaining the, the fluid environment, they also secrete something called surfactant. Surfactant is something you need to know about. It's really important in the lungs. Surfactant is a substance that helps to sort of keep water molecules apart from each other. What it's made of is hydrophobic protein. Uh, so it's built from hydrophobic amino acids and then also some phospholipids. So what this does um, is it reduces how many hydrogen bonds can be formed by water and therefore helps to reduce the surface tension. So that in the end prevents collapse of the alveoli. So production of surfactant, um, this is something that's relevant, well, it's relevant to all of us, of course, but um, let's think in terms of babies for just a minute. So produ production of surfactant is something that starts very late in, uh, in fetal life, so before the baby is born. I think it's around eight months is when this often starts to happen, production of surfactant. Um, so if a baby is born prematurely, there is a chance that their lungs won't have developed this surfactant yet. And so that means that their lungs are, the alveoli in their lungs are more likely to collapse in on themselves. And this is what is called respiratory distress syndrome. And this is why a lot of premature babies, they might have to stay in the hospital for, for a while. And the reason for that is because they're being treated for respiratory distress syndrome in a lot of cases. Um, how is it treated? It can be treated by administering surfactant. So it has to be through a, a tube that goes down into the lungs um, and they deliver surfactant and that helps the baby to be able to breathe, helps those alveoli to, to stay open and allows respiration to take place. Uh, still talking about babies, so um, even if a baby is born full term, so not prematurely, but carried full term, 
Um, in that case, that first breath that a baby takes right after being delivered, that first breath is so significant. Uh, think about what has to happen there. So when the baby is born, their lungs are, they're necessarily filled with fluid, right? The baby's been in fluid. Um, so what has to happen during that first breath is there has to be a huge pressure difference in order to drive air down and make it in and displace that that fluid. Um, so it's estimated that the pressure difference has to be like 15 to 20 times greater than for any subsequent breath. So the first breath is the hardest one for that baby ever, ever to take. And it's very significant when it happens.